I do. I love him with all my heart. I love him and I love his plan for our lives. I love the fact that God has a design for every service. He has a deposit for every time that we gather together. He has a specific strategy for our lives. As we are moving into this coming year, <coughs> we have received, you might have to give me a little bit more volume because I got really excited while I was worshiping. As we move into this year, we want to have our sensitivity and pay attention to the things that God has been speaking to us through trusted voices in our lives. And one of the things that the Lord spoke through Pastor Caldwell recently is that we are in the land of Goshen, that we need to build our expectation and our understanding that we are not subject to the same things that people who are not in covenant with God may be subject to. We are not limited to their resources or their way of dealing with things. We are kingdom people with kingdom resources, and we serve our Heavenly Father who will give us the wisdom to deal with anything and everything that comes along. So we need to prepare our hearts. We need to prepare our understanding that we are those who are supplied. We're not waiting for supply. We're not looking for supply. Jesus said, don't seek it. He said, don't ask the questions, what am I going to wear? What am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? He said, those are not the questions that are appropriate for kingdom people to be asking because your heavenly Father knows what you have need of. And we will receive the offering at the end of the service. We're moving right into the Word right now. The importance of this understanding in advance being established in our heart will make the difference between how we respond to difficult situations. Now, if you have heard what Dr. Savell received from the Lord concerning this upcoming year, it, he ministered two weeks ago in our Kansas campus, and it's available on the Roku channel, it's available on our YouTube channel or the podcast for you to go back and listen to that. But the Lord talked to Dr. Savell about the fact that in 2022, there would be difficult times, but for you and I, there's a supply. He said that this will be the year of the open hand of God. Amen? But that we needed to bring our expectation to that now. That we need to go into this year expecting I will be supplied for. Which is exactly what Pastor Caldwell was saying when he was telling us that we are in the land of Goshen. We are not the ones who are experiencing the same things that the world, the non-covenant people are experiencing. So this is an assignment. This is what we are working on. We're working on being people who walk in the spirit. Pastor's been dealing with established in truth and he has been really emphasizing the importance of letting truth be the governing force of our lives letting the truth of God set the boundaries and the structures for our decision making for our actions for our behavior and <clears throat> tonight I'm going to talk about living in the light I want to talk to about living in the light and I'm going this is a little bit different because of the way that the Lord gave it to me, there are some specific things that <clears throat> he pieced together for me of things that he has dealt with me about that I'm going to share with you. So we're going to begin in Ephesians 5. <clears throat> Ephesians 5, and let's begin in verse 8. I'm gonna, I want to lay this foundation of the fact that we are in the light. And so we need to know we're in the light. We need to act like we're in the not light. We need to live like we're in the light. We need to expect to have light on situations. The Bible says light is sown for the righteous. That means there is a harvest of clarity for me. There's a harvest of understanding because light is sown like a seed so that I will be able to see what I need to see in difficult times. So Ephesians 5, 8. 
<clears throat> For you were past tense. You were sometimes darkness. But now are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. You are light. But you choose to walk like your children of light. It's our choice. It's our response. We are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. So he says walk in the light and then he identifies the fruit of the Spirit. Which is what we were talking about this morning, wasn't it? He says, walk in the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So walking in the light is yielding to and developing ourselves in the fruit of the reborn human spirit. The character of God in us. That's walking in the light. And then he says this in verse 10. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. There are things people do. People who love God. People who are Christians. People who own Bibles and carry them with them. But they don't always prove what is acceptable unto the Lord. And then they have difficulty in their life. And then wonder, why did God let this happen? It's because they didn't prove what was acceptable unto the Lord. Now think about this. Romans 12 says that if we renew the mind, we will be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the renewing of the mind is a key to this living in the light. The renewing of the mind is, is more than just collecting spiritual information. It's more than just gathering uh, sermons and scriptures the renewing of the mind is bringing the revelation of what God reveals to your spirit and dominating the way you think with it God shows us things in our spirit this is where we receive from God in your spirit is you your spirit is the candle of the Lord that's where God shines the light if the lights are going to come on from God. If God's going to send light to you, it's going to be right here. He's going to send the light right here in your spirit. But then you have to bring that light up and you have to adjust whatever thinking was there prior. Whatever mindset was already in place. If it disagrees with the revelation of what God is revealing to you here, then you've got to bring it up to govern the mind. The mind the mind is not permitted to think whatever it wants to think. If you let your mind think whatever comes into it, the enemy will have a heyday with that. Because that's where he wants to bring the, uh, the darkness. That's where he brings the confusion. He brings it through thoughts. He, he, you hear words that produce images. You hear words that transmit images of fear that words can transmit images of of failure words can transmit images of rejection and that's why you have to be choosy whatsoever things are good whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are of a good report if there be any praise if there be any virtue think on these if it doesn't fall within that criteria reject the thought because if i allow the wrong thoughts it will cloud the light it will confuse the light and then i won't know what to do in the situation so the renewing of the mind helps me identify the will of god so that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable. I think you better put your eyes on it. Hold your place in Ephesians. I'm not done, but you need to see it. You need to see it because we don't, we don't have to miss the will of God another day. You hear me, faith builders family. 
I'm telling you, we're coming up to a higher level of living. We don't have to miss the will of God, not one more day ever again in our lives. We don't have to miss the will of God. The way to do it is to learn how to live in the light. And so it says here in Romans 12, verse 2, Be not conformed to the world, but be transformed. Metamorphosis. It's the Greek word metamorpho. We use the word to describe what takes place when a caterpillar becomes a butterfly. You are not supposed to live a caterpillar, limited, low-level living. But if there is no renewing of the mind, there is no higher level of living. To come up to the level of the spiritual supply and the spiritual protection and the spiritual understanding that's available now. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to try to get God to give it to you. It's yours now. But to come up and walk in it, there must be a renewing of the mind. And so it says, be ye transformed. We need this transformation. We need this transformation. We've already been changed in our spirit when we get born again. When we receive Jesus as Lord, we become new creatures. Old things are passed away. All things are created new. We are born of God. We are of God, little children. But because we're of God doesn't necessarily fix the wrong thinking. It doesn't fix the wrong thinking until we take this transformation step of renewing the mind so that you may prove, so that you may, and I'll tell you the definition of the word prove, to test, to examine, to approve and allow, to test, to examine, to approve, to allow. The renewing of the mind uh, helps you test what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It helps you examine to determine, is this the will of God for me? It helps you approve it. Is that what we read? Did you hold your place in Ephesians, like I said? Go back to Ephesians 5 and look. It says we're supposed to be proving something. We're supposed to be approving of something. We need to be able to prove what is acceptable to the Lord. You know, we were reading from a scripture in uh, Hebrews today that was talking about uh, strong meat belongs to those who have, by exercising their senses, they can discern between what is evil and what is good. That's talking about a spiritual exercise. That's talking about a spiritual maturity that brings me to the place that I can identify this is what God wants. This is what's acceptable to the Lord. And, and family, there are way too many Christians who can't identify what's God's will. There are too many Christians who are, are making the determinations and the decisions for major, major changes in their life. And they're making it because of money. They're making it because of opportunity. They say, well, it has to be God because look how this door opened. Devil, the devil can open doors. We want, we want to know... With a spiritual knowing, we don't need something happening on the outside. We don't need coincidences and we don't need things that happen on the outside because the enemy can manipulate those outside things, but he can't manipulate the voice of God in the inner witness. The inward witness is God's preferred method of communicating with us. God would prefer, if we want to have it God's way, if we want to say, God, I want to communicate with you the way that you prefer to communicate with me, he's going to tell you, you need to be skilled in the inward witness. In Romans chapter 8, 
it says that the Holy Spirit bears witness with our spirits. Let's look at it. Romans 8. I'm still not done with Ephesians 5. We're talking about proving. Romans 8. But I'm not just going to quote it. I want you to put your eyes on it. Romans 8. Verse 16, the Spirit himself, the Spirit himself. Now, how valuable is that? The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, he's bearing witness to that, and joint heirs, with Christ, the most important thing you will ever need to know in your life is that you're a child of God. That is the most valuable truth you will ever know. And how does God communicate it to you? By the Spirit himself bearing witness, the inward witness, bearing witness with your spirit. We need to be so skilled at hearing God through the inward witness because the enemy cannot manipulate it. He can't duplicate it. He doesn't even know what God is saying to you if you don't tell him. If you don't open up your mouth and blab it. There's a reason that Mary hid some things in her heart. You know, I wonder if things might have turned out a little bit different for Joseph if he hadn't been so quick to tell everything God was revealing to him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The inward witness is something that is so, it, it, it's part of your inheritance. It is only available to the righteous children of God. Why? Because we're born again. Uh, The Spirit of God dwells in us. He's there. He can talk to us. He can witness to us. He can can give us a green light when everything else looks like it should be a red light. He can tell us things, and if we'll trust, if we'll trust, I heard one minister say that the way that, that it, Pastor Nancy Dufresne, she said, I, I determined when my husband went home to be with the Lord because he, it was sudden. It, it, it had, when Dr. Dufresne's airplane went down, it was something that, that happened suddenly. There wasn't a lot of preparation for it. But she said in those first couple of days, she said to the Lord, Lord, here's what I'm going to do. If you witness it to my spirit, I'm going to act on it immediately. And if I, if I miss it, I'm going to trust you're going to rescue me from it because I'm going to endeavor in every time that I know that you're prompting me to do something, I'm going to endeavor to do it. And she said there was a financial situation concerning one of the buildings that Dr. Dufresne was in the process of building and the banks after his his passing, the banks began to put pressure on them because the head of the ministry wasn't there anymore and they wanted them to uh, get off their books. They wanted them to refinance and they were putting pressure on them. And she said, I had never done any of those financial dealings. I had not done any of the things with the contractors, the banks, the loans, any of it. She said, I had to depend on God for every step of the way. And she said, in the in the middle of one of those those situation she was actually out on the road preaching and the bank gave her an ultimatum a certain timeline that had to be done and she said I got in the the presence of the Lord and she said that night the Lord gave me a specific instruction he gave me peace about what to do and she said all night long the devil fought my head She said, I got up first thing in the morning, went down to the front desk, signed the paper and faxed it right away because I thought, I'm not not waiting another day. When I have peace, I'm acting on it and I'm going to act on it quickly so that the enemy doesn't try to move me over into reasoning and get me off of what God spoke to me in my heart. This is something that we need to make a priority proving what is acceptable unto the Lord proving I, I there are things that I need to know how to prove it and I need to know how to prove it 
from my spirit and not pull it up in my reasoning. I don't need to have a lot of outside evidence. I, 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 Gideon, Gideon, under the Old Testament, wasn't built like you're built. Gideon could ask God for a sign. Gideon could say, Lord, if that's really you, make the cotton wet and the ground around it dry. He got up in the morning, and it was exactly what God had asked. He said, okay, that's not enough for me. God, if it's really you, tomorrow morning, I want the ground to be wet and the cotton to be dry. And he got up, and it was exactly the way he said it, because God needed to deal with Gideon that way, because Gideon wasn't saved. Gideon wasn't born again. Gideon didn't have the, a born again spirit alive unto God. The Holy Spirit didn't live in Gideon's heart. He was on him. He was anointed on him, but he wasn't in him. But Jesus said, the Holy Spirit has been on you, has been with you, but he will be in you. Today, we have the indwelling of the Spirit of God. And I don't have to wait like Daniel waited for three weeks for the angel to get here with a word for me because I can get the word right here. God can tell me here. I don't have to wait for the angels to fight through. And for any satanic obstacles and hindrances, I can get the answer from God and I can move and the devil can be scratching his head saying, why is she doing what she's doing? Why are they acting the way they're acting? Why are they making the plans they're making the plans about? Because I have a knowing. I have proved what is acceptable unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is for us, the children of light. This is our privilege. This is a privilege, a benefit for us. If, oh my goodness, how people's lives would be different if they would just get in the Spirit. If they would just get in the presence of God. If they, would just, if they would just turn off the entertainment and turn off the distractions and say, I need to hear from God. And not just in, in a, a turmoil, not just when things are bad. I want to hear from God so I can miss the turmoil. I want to hear from God on a regular basis because if I do, he will put me out ahead of every situation and I can avoid a lot of pitfalls. I can avoid, if, if, see, if the Lord, it says that the Lord will direct your steps. The word direct means to unbend. It says, it says that he will if, you will, if you will follow, if you'll commit your way unto the Lord, yeah. he will direct your steps. He will unbend your steps. So it could be that there's a crooked path, but when you get in the presence of the Lord and you're committing your way to him, he leads you the straight way. He goes out ahead of you and unbends it for you. Prove what is acceptable unto the Lord. Philippians, I, hold your place in Ephesians 5. I'm not done. But I want you to see Philippians 1. Just a couple of pages over there. Philippians 1.10. And I'll tell you that I prayed this over you. This is a verse that God put in my heart to pray over this church family on a regular basis. So this verse is, 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 is like working over your life that you may approve things that are excellent. I want that for you with all my heart. That is something that I spiritually desire for every, every member of this church family, that you may approve those things which are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Those things are connected. Do you remember how it said that you can be blameless? Unto the coming of the Lord, how am I going to be blameless? I'm proving those things which are excellent. I'm making the right decision because he's leading me. He's, he's giving me the wisdom. I'm able, to prove, I'm able to approve the things that are excellent in my life. Let me read this to you from another translation. It says, and let me, let me see what the Amplified of this one says, because I, I don't know if I have Weiss or Amplified here on my, my notes. 
Hallelujah. So that you may surely learn to sense what is vital. Have you ever spent like weeks of your life and then you look back and you say, I wasted my time on that project. I, I was dealing with that situation and, I, and it came to nothing. We can avoid that. We can learn to recognize what is vital and approve and prize what is excellent and of real value. Recognizing the highest and the best and distinguishing the moral differences. Hallelujah. That's available to us. We need that. We need that. We need to be able to spiritually distinguish what is. Listen, I'll tell you something. Money is not the most important thing that you need. The mo th there's something that money can't buy and you can't get back, and it's your time. Time, when the more spiritually mature you become, the more you recognize how valuable your time is. Because you can't get it back. We can redeem the time. The Bible says that because of God's blessing upon our life, He can lengthen our days. Wisdom will make your days longer. If you feel like, my day, I don't get anything done. My day just got away with me. You need some wisdom. Because wisdom will lengthen your days. Have you ever heard Gloria Copeland tell the story about when she, they had first moved to Fort Worth and she had, uh, they had just moved and, or maybe it was mo just moved from Fort Worth to Tulsa. Both John and Kelly were little children and it was right about the time that Brother Copeland had taken the job flying uh, for Oral Roberts and was attending the school. So he was not there to help her very much. And she said, all of my belongings were in boxes. I had a couple of projects of furniture that I wanted to refinish. I had all of my responsibility with the children, with the ironing, with the washing of the clothes. You know, they weren't sending their stuff to the dry cleaners. You, you hear Sister Gloria tell it. You know, they were, they were using, a, uh, uh, they, they were boiling their potatoes in a, uh, <laughs> a, a teapot. A tea kettle. I mean, so she was doing everything by hand, all of the laundry, all of the ironing, everything. But Oral Roberts had said that the Lord told him to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts a, like a certain amount of time. I want to say it was like three times in 30 days. That's a lot of reading. And th when, he, when she heard Oral Roberts say that God had instructed her, him to do that, she said, the Lord said, I want you to do that. And all she could think about was, when am I going to have time with two little toddlers, all of my belongings in the boxes, all of these responsibilities of the laundry and everything else, when am I going to find time? But she said, because the Lord told me to do it, the Lord impressed me to do it, I sat down and made a chart. And she said, I figured out how many chapters I would have to read every day to read those five books that many times in 30 days. And she said, so I set myself a schedule. I got up earlier in the morning and I would read a certain amount of chapters in the morning. And then when the kids took their nap, I would read through those other chapters. And then I would read the others after I put them to bed at night. So she scheduled out her day to make time for the word. And she said, before that 30 days was over, not only had she unpacked and, and fixed everything in the house, all of the ironing was done, all of the, the uh, uh, responsibilities, and she said, I got three pieces of furniture re... re um, uh, uh, was it upholstered or she, she was like refurbishing this furniture? Refinishing. She said, I had more time than I had before. I had more time in my day and I got more accomplished. Why? Because she put the word first. The wisdom of the word of God lengthens our days. 
that doesn't make rational sense. But it makes spiritual sense. Yeah. Do you see how we need to approve that which is excellent? Mm. We live in a time that we don't need less church, y'all. We, I, I, I look, and I'm not criticizing, but I, I wonder how do other churches get any maturity and stability in their people with only one service a week and then like, 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 how, how do they get it? I, I've got so much you need. Pastor and I have so much that God has put on our plate to put, uh, to put, on, put on our stove to put on your plate. I need you in here eating more than one time on Sunday. You can't get everything you need just in, in less church. The Bible says forsake not. Do you see the difference in wisdom and rationality? Because there are, are, and I'm not criticizing anybody else what they're doing. I'm doing what God told me to do. And he, has, he, he told me we don't need to let Sunday night go. We need to make, Sunday night is, is I mean, y'all are getting some meat. Y'all are getting some extra, right? That's the difference in the rationality because the rationality says, well, you know, let's, let's, let's give it less. Let's make it more comfortable. This isn't about comfort. Comfort is overrated. Comfort is not vital. Comfort's not going to help you when you're under attack. Comfort's not going to help you when, when Satan has launched a, a full-out attack against your family. Spiritual strength is what you need. And you need, you need the Word and the Spirit to be able to have the supply that you need. Glory to God. That's light. That's light. Forsake not the assembling, the assembling, the gathering together, the assembling together, and even more so as you see the day approaching. It, we see the day approaching. This is the even more so days. This is the even more so days. That's why there's, there's corporate prayer on Monday night. There's healing school on Tuesday at 1030. There's Bible study on Wednesday night. There's church on Sunday morning, Sunday night. And you just give pastor an opportunity. He'll have something else if you want it. Because he'll preach at the drop of a hat and drop it himself. But we need light. We need to be able to prove what is acceptable. Okay, now we can go back to Ephesians and try to get through the Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. Proving, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. All things that are reproved. The word reproved, my center column reference says discovered. All things that are discovered are made manifest by the light. For whatever does, whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So the light identifies those things that are dangerous. The light identifies motives. The Bible says that the word of God can discern the thoughts and the intents of people's hearts. You may be in a business deal and it might look like that person is, is doing something uh, that's going to benefit you. But if you'll listen to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will let you know if they're about to pull the rug out from under you. Because... The light will make it manifest. We need the light to make things manifest in our, our decisions, in our life. Verse 14, wherefore, ever he, wherefore he says, Awake thou that sleep, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, 
I don't use that word much. Do you use that word circumspectly? Can we use that amplified and see if circumspectly can have a little bit more clarity for us? How are we supposed to walk? Not as fools, but as wise. Well, he's talking about the light. Look carefully then how you walk. Live purposefully and worthily and accurately. That makes more sense to me than circumspectly, doesn't it to you? Yeah. Live purposefully. Every day, there's the purpose of God for that day. Accurately, worthily, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We were here this morning for a different purpose, but we're back today and we're going to go a little bit further with it. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but we have received the spirit of God, the spirit which is of God. We have received the spirit which is of God. Every born-again believer has received the Spirit of God. There is the indwelling of the Spirit that every believer has experienced. Every person who has made Jesus the Lord of their life has the Spirit of God dwelling in their spirit. Romans 8 says that uh, the, the same spirit who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, dwells in you, which is different from the baptism in the Holy Spirit, which is also an experience, but it only is available. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is only available to those who have already received Jesus as Lord and are born again. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is a subsequent experience, a second uh, experience that comes as a result of this fullness that God wants us to have. But we have all received the Spirit which is of God, and the verse goes on to tell us why He wants you to have the Holy Spirit living in you, so that you might know things. We should not be caught off guard. We should not be in the dark. We are children of the light. The Spirit of God lives in us so that we can know things. So that we can know the things that are freely given to us of God. He wants us to know them. And then it says, which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. There are words the Holy Spirit wants to teach us to say. Words that will position us. Words that will set us over. Words that will unlock things for our lives. So we speak what the Holy Spirit teaches us to speak, comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. For they are, they, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Now we're back to proving what is excellent. Yeah. We're back to proving it. They are, this word discerned, it also means to uh, examine which is what Romans 12, 2 meant, to prove what is acceptable and perfect will of God. It meant to examine, to test. It's the same word. It means to scrutinize or check something closely. So there are things that we're supposed to spiritually look at and investigate and turn it over and, and, and talk to the Lord about it. He says, the natural man can't receive the things of God 
for their foolishness. He can't know them because they have to be known spiritually. They have to be recognized spiritually. They have to be examined spiritually. But he that is spiritual, now that's you. He that is spiritual judges, it's the same word. Examine, investigate, scrutinize, check closely, inspect, or look through a series of objects to distinguish. He that is spiritual scrutinizes, examines, and investigates all things. That's what sets us apart. We just don't take it at face value. We just don't, we don't make a decision because it looks like it's the right, just because of the way it looks. We don't, we, don't, we don't make that purchase just because it's a great deal. If there's not peace, if there's not that spiritual wisdom, if there's not that understanding. And so he says, those who are spiritual, we learn to examine things. We learn to investigate things. We learn to search some things out. See, there's more to prayer than just asking for stuff. There's more to prayer than just the petition part. As, as we communicate with our Father, we'll find out the more we talk to Him, the more He'll tell us. The more we come into His presence, and, and Patsy Caminetti, who was very closely associated with Brother Hagen in the healing school, she said the Lord told her, ask me questions that only I know the answer to. Ask me questions that only I know the answer to. We, we need to be coming to God with some questions. And so I've learned to ask God, Lord, what should I ask you about this? I, I come to situations and instead of just hitting that situation in the mental arena and just trying to grab a, uh, grab a, a scripture that I think might fit, I'll come to it and say, Father, what about that? And then I'll pray in the Spirit. And Father, about this situation. And then I'll pray in the Spirit. And then when I get done praying in the Spirit, I claim Mark 11, 23. I believe I receive what I just prayed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why? Because I want to spiritually examine. I want to spiritually investigate these things. Hallelujah. Let's look at Isaiah 28. Isaiah 28 is an interesting verse. And an interesting, actually, text. This, this, this area of text that we're going to look at. It's using an example... Chapter 28, verse 23, it's using an example of agriculture, but we're applying it to wisdom. And we're applying it to being able to prove those things which are acceptable. So Isaiah 28, 23, Give ye ear and hear my voice, hearken and hear my speech. Does the plowman plow all day to sow? Does he open and break the clods of his ground? When he has made plain the face thereof, does he not cast abroad the fitches and scatter the cumin and cast in the principal wheat and the appointed barley and the rye in their place? For his God does instruct him to discretion and does teach him. So he's using an example of a farmer and he's explaining that the farmer doesn't just go do Everything the same way. The way he deals with the cumin is different than the way that he deals with the wheat. And the way that he deals with the barley is different than the way that he deals with, with this other. That there are different processes for different aspects of his life. And how did he learn? How did he learn the difference? 
How did he learn the difference? I wonder if it would help us in the Amplified of this. Can you switch me over to Amplified and, and start in verse 24? Does he, does he who plows for sowing plow continually? Does he continue to plow and harrow the ground after it is smooth? When he has leveled its surface, does he not cast abroad the seed of dill or fennel and scatter cumin, a seasoning, and put the wheat in rows and barley in its intended place and spelt a, a, an inferior kind of wheat at the border? And he trains each of them correctly for his God instructs him correctly and teaches him. How did this farmer know that I need to put this this inferior wheat on the outside to protect what's on the inside? How did he know that I need to plow it a certain way, that I need to prepare my ground a certain way, that I need to sow this seed this way and harvest this seed this way because they're all different? How did he know? His God instructs him correctly. That's what we need. There are things in your life that you need specific direction for. Raising your children and then believing God for your grandchildren. Every aspect of our life, we need specific direction and God instructs us correctly. There are different processes for our life. There are different, different um, uh, ways to approach things, different ways to set things in order. Do you remember that... Um, David, when he came and he found that the Amalekites had taken all of the children and the women, and he inquired of the Lord, didn't he know he should go after them? I mean, wouldn't you have just thought, hey, yeah, go after them. Why did he inquire of the Lord? Lord, do I? You'll look and you'll see that every time David got in one of those situations, he asked God, what do I do? Do I go? And God would say, go. Do I go? Go. Do I go? Go. But then there was a time, listen to me, there was a time that David came and said, Lord, do I go? And God said, go around the way of the mulberry bush. He gave him a different instruction because there was a different process that needed to take place for his victory. He couldn't just go the way he would have normally gone. He could have just got up and said, every time I ask God, God tells me to go. Of course he wants me to go. Of course he wants me to pursue and overtake. Of course. But no, he had enough wisdom to seek God again. And in that seeking God, in that, in that proving what was acceptable to God, God gave him a specific instruction about the way to go that put him at the advantage over the enemy. Yeah. Hallelujah. The process is because God instructs us and teaches us these specific areas of our life. Verse 26 again says, He trains each of them correctly, for his God instructs him correctly and teaches him. The Message Bible says they know exactly what to do and when to do it because God is their teacher. That happens to me, y'all. I just want y'all to know. That verse is for me. I claim that one. I know. I, 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 this is what I put in my mouth. I know exactly what to do. Even when my head doesn't know what to do, I'm going to say, I know exactly what to do and, and when to do it because God is my teacher. The New Living Translation says, The farmer knows just what to do, for God has given him understanding. The Good News Translation says, They know how to do their work, for God has taught them. Let's look at verse 29. Verse 29 says, this also comes forth from the Lord of hosts. Because he went through and he talked about how to harvest the different types of, of corn and wheat in different ways. It says, this also comes from the Lord of hosts, which is wonderful in counselor 
and excellent in working. The message translation says, He learned it all from God who knows everything about when and how and where. <laughs> Woo! He knows everything about when. He knows everything about how. He knows everything about where. You and I can always be at the right place at the right time. You and I can always be ahead of the situation. We never have to be the tail. We never have to be behind. We never have to be caught off guard. If we'll just talk to God, if we'll just learn from Him, He knows everything about when and how and where. God will make us look like we're a genius. And it's all him. It's all him. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Woo! Shalabasa. First Kings 429. I tell y'all, this is this is vital to the days ahead. You're gonna want to download this on your podcast and listen to it again. I think I will too. 1 Kings 4. I'm going to quote something to you that Pastor Nancy Dufresne said under the unction of the Holy Ghost. She said, small thinking is done away with by proper meditation. I'll say it again. Small thinking is done away with by proper meditation. We won't arrive at what God has authored for us with limits. Small thinking is done away with by proper meditation. I'm talking about meditating on the word. 1 Kings 4, let's look at verse 29. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much and largeness of heart even as the sand of the seashore. He gave him wisdom and understanding exceeding much. Let me show the Amplified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because this needs to be our objective. We want, the, we want the wisdom and spiritual understanding that Ephesians 1 prayer speaks of. God gave Solomon exceptionally much wisdom and understanding and breadth of mind. Breadth of mind. If you're taking notes, write that phrase down. Breadth of mind like the sand of the seashore so king james says largeness of heart the amplified says breadth of mind the ceb trans- translation complete english bible says insight as long as the seashore itself the good new- the uh, good news translation knowledge too great to be measured. The EHV, breadth of knowledge. The ICB translation, his wisdom was hard to measure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Largeness of heart, insight as long as the seashore itself. Breadth of knowledge, breadth of mind. Knowledge too great to be measured. And Solomon wasn't built like you're built. Under the Old Testament, if Solomon could have that kind of understanding under the Old Testament, how much more can we operate in, in Christ? 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, Jesus is made unto me wisdom. I have access to the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Mark 4, 11. I'm almost done. I've almost made the deposit I needed to make tonight. Mark 4, 11. 
Jesus is teaching about the kingdom principles. And he says, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. The Weiss translation it says it is in your possession. It is in your possession to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. In this same chapter, Jesus said in verse 24, Take heed what you hear. With what measure you measure, and you know I'm going to want the amplify to this one. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. With the measure you measure. We're talking about the understanding. We're talking about us being able to prove that which is excellent. To approve what is acceptable to the Lord. And he says that we have been given the ability to know. The Spirit of God has been given to us so that we could know. It is given to us to know the mysteries of the kingdom. There's nothing in the kingdom that's hidden from us. It's hidden from others, but not from us. God wants to teach you every kingdom detail. He wants you to be so kingdom skilled and kingdom proficient that you operate in the blessing like nobody, like nobody's business. I mean, like people say, what happened to you? I've been working the kingdom principles. I've been living in the kingdom. I've been operating out of the kingdom. I've been I've becoming skilled in the kingdom. The Amplified says, the measure of thought and study you give. Do you see how, how we have a part to play in this? Meditation, small thinking is done away with by proper meditation. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue that's power that's dunamis dunamis right there dunamis the measure of dunamis and knowledge that comes back to you you are the one who determines the harvest of light and understanding you're getting it depends on how much attention you're giving to the light attend to my words let them not depart from in front of your eyes. Incline your ear to hear them. The measure that you give will be the measure that comes back to you. The measure that we give to the word will be the measure of understanding and spiritual light that comes back and more. Why? Because when God brings it, he brings it multiplied back. He's not going to just give you a little. It says light is sown for the righteous. That means it's coming up multiplied understanding, multiplied wisdom, multiplied answers. The measure you give will be the measure that comes back to you and more besides will be given to you who hear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 34, same chapter, Mark 4, 34. And I'm going to find a place to close right here. That's, is that my second close? I get three. Was that my second or third? But without a let's start in 33. With many such parables spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. We talked about that this morning. That the greater spirit, that, that the more you and I individually develop ourselves spiritually when we come together corporately god will be able to say things to us that he can't say if we're carnal if we'll if we'll mature if we'll grow if we'll follow that discipleship path and that plan and we'll we'll give ourselves through the week to to the growth 
of our spirit and the developing of our spirit, the maturing of our spirit, when we come together, we'll get revelation and things, utterances given to us because we'll be able to hear it. But it says Jesus spoke to them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable spoke he not unto them. And when they were alone, he expounded all things to his disciples. Why? Because they were at a different place to hear. He expounded all things to his disciples. Can you show me Amplified? Oh, you're so good. Look, he's already got it up there. He did not tell them anything without a parable, but privately to his disciples who were peculiarly or specially or specifically his own, he explained everything fully. That's us. That's us. That's the conversations we need to have with God. Explain that to me. The Weiss translation says, but in private, he was in the habit of fully explaining all things to those pupils who were peculiarly his own. And I, I wrote out in my notes, that's me. That's me. I'm the one who is sitting there saying, expound on that, Lord. I want to know more. I had someone uh, make a statement. They, they were... They were meeting with pastor and uh, it was ministers who were meeting with pastor. And they said to me, when you're there, you know how to, to pull things out of him. And I learned it because when I first started coming down to VTN to film our television broadcast, Pastor Caldwell and Sister Jeannie would take me to lunch. When I would come down to film the um, partner specials, they would take me to lunch on those days. And I would take, I, I, when I, I still, when, I'm, when I have lunch with my pastor, I take my notebook. This notebook has wisdom that Pastor Caldwell and Sister Jeannie have imparted to me. This notebook is full of notes that I've had when I have been in the presence of Pat Harrison, Dr. Savelle. When I go into their presence, I open my notebook, I've got my pen, and I start asking questions. Why? Because I, I, I'm not here to chat. This is too important of an opportunity for us to talk about the weather. Or for us just to talk about... I, I, God did not place my pastor in my life to be my buddy. He has an impartation that I need. Sister Jeannie has wisdom I need. And so when I get with him, and Sister Jeannie, she loves it. She goes, what's your next question, Michelle? She's, I mean, she's loaded. She's ready. She, she'll be like, okay, we'll answer one. And she say, what's your next question, Michelle? Do you have something more? And I'm like, yes, ma'am, I do. And I, I, I go ready into those times. I want to know things. And I will ask, I will ask how they did certain things. I will ask uh, uh, what, what were some of the things they put in place. Like for Dr. Savelle, I asked him what, my, one of my questions I ask all of the ministers that I have the privilege of speaking with is how their longevity. Because I don't want to be a shooting star. I don't want to fall short of what God's plan for this ministry is. I want the longevity. I, it, 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 um, it speaks to me the longevity that my pastor has. It speaks to me the accuracy that Dr. Savell has. And so I ask, what were some of the steps to their longevity? And Dr. Savell said to me, and I wrote it in my notebook. I got it here in my notebook. He said, you find out what you're supposed to do and become a master at it. Don't let anything distract you from what God told you to do. But I had to become a pupil. I had to learn how to, to, because if you'll just get 
a, a man or woman of God who God puts in your life, if you'll, if you'll come with the hunger, the Lord will pull out of them what you need. The Lord will pull out the wisdom that you need. Hallelujah. That's what he says. If you, if you receive a righteous man in the name of a righteous man, what do you get? Righteous man's reward. If you receive a brother as a brother, what do you get? A brother reward. If you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you're going to get what's in that office. You're going to get what's in that supply. That's why w you will get more by coming to pastor as pastor and not saying, what's up, Phil? No. You're, you're not going to get what he has divinely supplied to offer. And that's what we want to be students of wisdom we want the understanding and we want to be skilled so that we can prove that which is excellent prove that which is excellent i had one more story to tell you and i'm i'm and it's not a story from my life but it's something that i noticed from something that was shared by Kenneth Hagen. Kenneth Hagen had received an instruction from the Lord. God dealt with him about doing something. And he, he neglected to do it. And it caused a, a detour. It caused a delay in some things in his life. And um, the Lord dealt with him i'm looking for exactly where i'd written it down i had it marked but i pulled my paper off of it but the holy spirit is redirecting me to it so i'm going to go back and obey god because it will help someone thank you father he told Brother Hagen, the reason you didn't do what I told you is because you doubted it was my spirit who had spoken to you. God had given him an instruction, and, and what he did was he pulled it up into his mind. Was that really God? Maybe that wasn't the spirit of God telling me to do that. And so he didn't do it. And the Lord said, you doubted that it was my spirit who had spoken to you. And the Lord said, faith obeys my word, whether it is the written word or the word my spirit speaks to man. This is why we have to become skilled here. This is why we have to become skilled in hearing and responding, immediately responding in faith to the prompting and the voice of the Holy Spirit. Not, not pulling it up. Remember what, what I, I said about Pastor Nancy. The enemy fought her mind all night long about that decision. It was a major, major financial decision. And the, God had given her peace. God had given her peace and she knew if I let this continue in my mind, it's going to derail me. So I'm going to act on what God has given me in my spirit. I'm going to act on what he's dealt with me that I'm clear in my spirit about. Because if I keep pulling it up to my thinking, I'll cloud my, my decision. We, we have the examples of people that we can learn so that we don't have to make those mistakes. So that we don't have to have those same things. He said the reason that he didn't do it is because he doubted that it was his spirit, that it was the spirit of God who has spoken. We've got to become so clear. And it's not hard, but it is going to take our attention. Not just time. Time is a part of it, but we've got to bring our attention to it. Did you receive tonight? Amen. Stand with me to your feet.